this Easter Sunday. Yeah, Sunday's right. Don't forget we's on the radio every Sunday for a rinse, though. Yeah.
charges the St. Louis Commission. <laughs> Something tells me I oughtn't to go in here. I'll bet anything he ain't in the clothing business. All oh, right, Kingfish. Oh, come in, Andrew, come in. I was in the clothing business now. By gosh, he is at that. <laughs> And on the telephone here to Hollywood, California. Be with you just a minute. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mr. Manju. <laughs> yeah, I realize when it comes to clothes, you was very meticulous. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got some beautiful new materials in. Well, we got a lovely unfinished Worcestershire. <laughs> what does you want? For shark skin? Oh, certainly the best. I skinned the shark myself this morning. <laughs> Mind you. Oh, by the way, I read your book entitled It Took Nine Tailors. Give my love to the other eight. So long, Miss Martin. So, you was in the clothing business, Kingfish? Oh, uh, yes, he is, ain't there? Well, not there, something. You know, I'm looking for a new suit for Easter. Yeah, you got anything here that'll fit me? Well, there's one suit here that ain't been sold yet. Yeah, there is one. Which one? Which one you like? <laughs> Let me get over to the rack here and get a good look at him. Mm-hmm. Hey, Kingfish, look at these suits. is all beat up and wrinkled. They look like they had plenty of wear before. Oh, naturally, and uh, these are English suits. And an English suit is just like a rare old piece of silver. The older it is, and the more it's been used, the more valuable it is. <laughs> Holy smoke, look at this one here. The trousers alone must be worth $1,000. <laughs> uh, look at the seat of this thing. It's all shiny. And uh, uh, that's an exclusive feature of our suits. All trousers have been pre-tested. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that pair of trousers there has got what they call the good housekeeping seat of approval there. Uh, maybe I can try one on. Uh, you got my size? Uh, what size you take, Andy? 46. Well, uh, I don't have a 46 in stock, but I got the equivalent to that. Yeah, what's that? I got a large 36. <laughs> Let's squeeze this on you here. Okay. All right. Oh, this is a great suit, and look at that. Great condition. A lot of mileage left in that suit. Yeah, push it on there, now. Push it on. Keep going. Yeah. There you go. Uh, how do you feel, Andy? Nice fit, huh? It's choking me. Under the arm. Yeah, well, I'm a little loose up in August when you take off your heavy underwear. Wait, wait a minute, King. Really, what kind of suit is this, anyhow? Well, Andy, that's what we call the three-button model. I don't see no buttons on there. Yeah, I got two on one sleeve and one on the other. There. Yeah, but there ain't none on the front. Well, they ain't supposed to be. Then what are these buttonholes for? That's so why you don't tear the car when you clam together with a safety pin. Yeah. Huh? And the buttonholes are strapped over for the mark, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I tell you, Andy, this suit has really got some great features. Yeah. Look at that at the bottom of the coat there. It's got a nice slit in the back there. That's what they call a vent. See that? <laughs> Hey, I was just looking. Uh, got a vent under each arm, too. <laughs> well, now, Andy, that's the little thing. Uh, them upper vents is the ones that give you the cross ventilation, you see. Uh, well, tell me this. How much you asking for this suit, Kingsman? Well, since I was out of the high rent district, and since I don't give rap, since I know you've got 50 bucks in your pocket, I'll make it 50 bucks. Yeah. Well, see you again, Kingfish. I was thinking if it was under a dollar, I might buy it. Well, Andy, we're so long, Kingfish. So long. Oh, man. Now I ain't got no money to take Uncle Frank's sight. You know, what in the world? Oh, uh, hello. Hello, George. This is your Uncle Frank. Oh, hello, Uncle Frank. Yeah, I just come into town. I won't be able to come up to the house today. Got too much business to attend to. Oh, that's great. I mean, uh, uh too bad, too bad. Uh, no, but I'm staying over till tomorrow, and I'll be over at one thing to see your wife and the baby. Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh now, Uncle, uh, I won't take a sightseeing. Uh, no, no, I ain't interested, George. All I want to see is that little baby. You know, George, I've always said that a baby in the home is just like a little ray of sunshine. Yeah, well, I tell you, Uncle, I was afraid that the weather tomorrow is going to be a little on the cloudy side. I... Shorty, I, 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 I
problem the other day. My rich uncle is coming over here in about an hour, and I told him that me and Sapphire's got a baby. Well, congratulations. Uh, no, no. I just told him we had a baby to get some money out of him. Mm. When he finds out I done made up the story, he's going to cut me out of his will. I sure wish there was some way that I could get a baby for a few days to do something. Uh, yeah, well, you see, you can't. Say, here's an idea, Kingsley. Do you know Amos and, and, and Ruby are, is, is going marching east to parade this afternoon? Uh, yeah, I know it is. Uh, yeah, my wife Sapphire is going with him, too. Yeah, well, then that, that makes it perfect, yeah. You see, because Andy and his new girl, Gertrude, is, is going to mind Amos' new baby, Amos and about her parents marching in the parade. So Andy told me that they're going to go take the baby for a walk in, 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 in Central Park. That's what he yeah, said. Yeah, so wait, wait, wait a minute here now. And this girl, and this girl, Gertrude... Yeah, that's it, Shorty. Mm. And this girl, Gertrude, and Amos Sandra. That's great. That's a ready-made family for me. Mm. I'll call up Andy and have him with his girl, Gertrude, and Amos Sandra just drop by my house here just before my uncle comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can introduce Gertrude as my wife and little Amos and Andra as my baby. Oh, Shorty, you are the great help to me. Oh, well, I, I, I tell you, when it comes to an emergency, I, I do got... What I do? <laughs> Uh, you mean you don't even know what a pot 
I'll let you live in. Oh, Uncle Frank, excuse me. Uh, could I speak to your confidential? Step over to the curbstone here with me, will you please? Uh, I want to talk to you privately. Uh, what is it, George? Uncle, I think you have discovered the one flaw in my sweet little wife's personality. She's stupid as a mule. <laughs> How could you have such a clever baby, boy? Well, uh, it's the old law of the jungle, uh, the theory of evolution. Uh, the offspring always springs higher than what it springs off of. Then. That is, you see, not only that, but Einstein proved that with his relatives, you see. Well, son, you know your wife better than I do. But the important thing is that she seems to be a good mother and devoted to the baby. Oh, she's a wonderful girl, huh? Well, George, I've got to be going. I've got to get back to the hotel and pack. My train leaves in two hours. Yeah, well, must you leave so soon? Yeah, she has a must. But on the way back to the hotel, I'm going to stop at the store and get him to send you over a toy for your baby. Good. Well, this is goodbye, George. Uh, goodbye, Sapphire. I say goodbye, Sapphire. Oh, uh, Sapphire. Hey, you buy the baby carriage. <laughs> Carpenter, my 1950 Rinso wash is really beautiful. The white clothes are whiter than new, and all my pretty colored washables are even brighter than brand new. It's because of the sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso. 1950 Rinso gets and keeps your clothes whiter, brighter than any other soap. And yet Rinso is so kind to my hands, and I know it's so safe for all my wash. Ladies, tomorrow, be sure you've got the economical giant size of new 1950 Rinso. And now back to Amos and Andy. Well, hello there, Stonewall. Uh, how are you, Kingfish? Uh, yeah. well, I hope you don't mind me coming up to your house here on Easter Sunday, but i got to have... Uh, your advice on something very important. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, well, what's the trouble, King? Well, I want you to listen carefully to this and get all the facts. Now, I told an uncle of mine that me and South I had a baby so I could get some money out of it. Well, he wanted to see my wife and the baby. So I introduced Andy's girl, Gertrude, to my uncle, the Sapphire, and my uncle caught Andy kissing Andy's girl, and he thought it was Sapphire. You follow me now? Oh, certainly. There's just one thing I don't understand. What's that? When did your uncle have this baby? <laughs> that we had a baby and that I did not want him to see the, to meet my wife Safa. Oh, now, don't bring you. That'd be a shock for anybody. Uh, <laughs> told her, the important thing is that I got a good-looking girl by the name of Gertrude. She's really good-looking. I got her to pose as Sapphire for, for my uncle. So that, 
the, the, the uncle saw Andy on the front step, kissing and smooching with this uh, girl, Gertrude. Oh, they was going at it hot and heavy. <laughs> now, is there any questions so far? Yeah. How was that? Do you have Gertrude's telephone number? Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. The main thing is that I need some good advice to tell my uncle what, why Andy was kissing my wife. Wait a minute. If Andy was your wife's brother, that might explain it. Oh, brother, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell him. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell him that the man he beat over the head was my wife's brother. Yeah, yeah, I can tell my uncle that the family is naturally affectionate. And yeah, that's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah, I'll hold water. Yeah, I'll go do that. Oh, yeah, I know, because I come from a affectionate family myself. You know, well, my older brother was always doing nice things for me. Mm-hmm. He even sent me money all the time I was in law school. Oh, he must have done a lot for you, Stonewall. Oh, he was wonderful to me. One day I inherited $10,000 in cash. My brother was out of a job, and he come to me and he say, Stonewall, I know out of appreciation for all I've done for you, you're going to split that money with me, ain't you? What'd you say to him, Stonewall? Oh, man, no. <laughs> That's what that's the story, Uncle Frank, and I brought Andy up here just to prove it to you. You mean to say this man, Andrew, here, that I saw on the front steps with his arm around your wife is actually her brother? Yeah, certainly he is. Ain't that right, dear brother-in-law, Andy? Oh, sure, sure. Me and her ain't only brother and sister, but we got the same mom and papa, too. Yeah. <laughs> that makes them totally related. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I guarantee you, I was my sister's brother. Well, I must say, when I saw you two, you were acting awfully affectionate. I don't understand it at all. Yeah, well, you see, Uncle Frank, that happened to be a family tree. There's a kissing this family in town. Oh, back there at home is always that way, wasn't it, Andy? Oh, sure, sure. Right. Yeah, the mama was kissing the papa, the papa was kissing the kids. Everybody kissing everybody else. Oh, yeah, during the holidays when all the relatives come home, sometimes I'd go for seven or eight days without unfuckering. <laughs> puzzles me is that if Sapphire is your sister, why didn't you say something about it when I was hitting you over the head with a cane? Well, I didn't want to stop kissing her. <laughs> well, George, I guess I got the wrong impression about the whole thing. But you see, I don't have no use for people that don't take the marriage seriously. Oh, that's all right, Uncle. You don't have to apologize. Well, now, look, I, I'm taking the 705 train back home. I got some business calls from Mexico got to get packed. So this is goodbye. You mean that you're going? It certainly was wonderful meeting you and your lovely family. Mm-hmm. And it was nice meeting an affectionate man like you too, Andy. Oh, thank you, Uncle. Thank you. Can I ask you one question before you go? Yeah, hey, what's that, Andy? Would you kiss me goodbye? <laughs> Did your uncle have a good time while he was here in New York, Kingfish? Oh, yes, he did, Amos. Oh, yeah, the Kingfish really took care of his uncle all right, Amos. Oh, yes, Amos, and from the hints that he dropped about his will, he's going to take good care of me, too. I'll have to be an heiress. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did your uncle leave yet, Kingfish? Yes, he left about an hour ago. Amos took a 705. Well, fella, before I leave, I want to thank you, Andy, for taking care of Amos Andrew this afternoon. Oh, I was glad to do it, Amos. Well, Amos, I took care of her, too. And little did you know what a big help she was to me. Well, I'm glad of it. Well, I get going, boy. Well, I'll walk on with you, Amos. So long, King. So long, boy. Oh, hot dog. Well, that Easter Bunny certainly has been good to me. Let me open the door here. Is that you, George? Oh, yes, it's me, honey. Happy Easter to you. George, come over here and sit down on this sofa with me. I want to have a talk with you. Yeah, well, I'll sit down here. Now, wait a minute. What, what's the matter, honey? Where have you been all day? Well, honey, I, I, I've been with my uncle, and, and believe me, honey, we is really in solid with him now. And boy, I is in the will, and all because he thinks we are such a wonderful family. Oh, well, that's wonderful, George. Yeah. I, I'm certainly glad you've done something to ensure our future. Oh, we step now. Well, I'll forgive you for not being with me on Easter then. Put your arm around me, George. Oh, I love you, baby. Uh, come in, let's open. Huh. George, I missed my train and I thought, George, who is that strange woman you got your arms around? Uh, uh, Uncle, and don't try to tell me that she's your sister. Oh, wait a minute. George, what are you listening to? The Amos and Anderson.